All right, we're live. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the first podcast of Mech Talk Volume 2. Uh, my name is Chance Dell. I'll be your main host. And we're the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, uh, tentatively. Uh, let's go around and introduce everyone that's here with us. Uh, start with uh, the president himself, yeah. the main man. How's it going, everyone? My name is Eric Trejo, and uh, I'm the president here at UT Dallas. I'm currently a senior and hoping to graduate this semester. All right, right on. Let's go to Justin. He's right. the secretary. I am secretary. My name's Justin Flowers. Your yeah, co-host? Oh, yeah. I'm the co-host. So you'll hear my voice a lot. Great. Thanks. Woo! All right. My name is Jesus Sainz. I'm the uh, the officer of fundraising. And it's uh, I am still stuck here for another year. <laughs> Woo! Woo! All, right. All right. Cut that out. <laughs> All right. All right uh, I'm Alex Ansel. I'm the competitions chair. Uh, I'm also a senior mechanical engineer, and I'm supposed to graduate this semester. Woo! Name's Erasmus Garcia. I'm the project uh, chair for the UTD chapter, and I am a senior and hopefully graduating next semester. Woo! Yeah. Woo! I'm Ricky Ali, and I'm the public public relations officer, and I graduate in the fall of 2022. Woo! Right, awesome, yeah. Congrats, congrats. And I forgot to mention, I'm the uh, uh, member engagement officer, so just to specify. So I guess the next thing we wanted to talk about is the goals for the podcast, what we, what we want to bring to you, the listener, and what we think you'll get out of this podcast. So one of the principal things that we think that we'd be able to inform you, the listener, is to bring on guest speakers, kind of you know, explore our own backgrounds and where we came from and how we got here, because no one's journey through college is exactly the same. And we feel like it'd be good to kind of share our stories and also get uh, invites and uh, invite experts and get them on here and hear what they have to say. And maybe you can learn about your career. You can learn more about your career aspirations, uh, different areas of industry through talking to these individuals. And we can learn a lot. And uh, I think that's one of the re reasons why we thought this was a good idea. Um, and other goals for the podcast, I think, is just to kind of come together as a group a little bit more, uh, learn more about each other. Um yeah, and if anyone, if there's any subsequent goals, um, if anyone wants to, you know, have anything in mind, any ideas that, you know, the listener would probably benefit from going forward, um, you know, you're more than welcome. Um, and then, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, so uh, another thing that, like, I think we all collectively have in mind for this is not to be super, like, prof like we are going to, like, have professional days, but, like, we yeah. also kind of want to, like, just show student life, um for the freshmen, for incoming students, uh, for students going through college that might be a little lost or maybe not exactly um, feeling the college life, kind of where to find it. Uh, uh, just talk about different things that, you know, we're all feeling. I mean, it's been quite interesting for the last two years, honestly. It's been a journey. <laughs> it's, yeah, been it's been quite a journey. journey. It's so, uh, you know, this is going to just be a nice conversation for anyone to listen to, especially as a engineer because uh, that's what we are and yeah uh, or not engineers if you're just interested about student, what we're, yeah. what we're doing yeah. or yeah just see what it's like being a uh, undergraduate engineer in the year 2022 you're gonna hear all our stressed moments <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Episodes, you're just gonna hear us all straight <laughs> <and be> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 so whether you're underclassmen um upperclassmen it doesn't matter we're you're, you're more than welcome here and we're lucky to have you um so another, so the next goal that we wanted to, or next topic we wanted to bring about was to talk about our stories and where we all came from uh, and how we got here. So I guess to start um, as your, as your host, um, so I started call, I graduated high school in the year 2014, which is a thousand years ago, and I wanted to do architecture. That's funny. <laughs> and, uh. After a couple of years of doing architecture school, I found out it really wasn't my thing. Um, it wasn't for me. I was more interested in the technical aspects of stuff. So uh, over the next couple of years, I went to Collin County Community College. I, I took my engineering basics, and then I've been at UTD for the past couple of years. And I've joined you know, ASME, got to meet some wonderful people, and that kind of led to where I'm, I am now. And now I'm about to set graduate in the spring. Um, Justin, how did you get here? Um, so I'm not from here. I don't know if you mentioned you're from the area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, born yeah. and raised. Um, so me and uh, Erasmo, we're both from a place called the Valley. 
Rio yeah. Grande Valley. Rio Grande Valley. Yeah. <laughs> Texas. <six>. Texas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's about it's like an eight-hour drive, ten minutes from the border. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm from. It's it's a little different there. So going to college, the only reason I'm I'm here is because of my mom. She was the one who really like enforced the idea. She knew that if you wanted to get ahead, you had to go to get your education. So when I graduated, I kind of just looked around, see what I had, what opportunities were there for me. I had a pretty decent GPA, so I thought about going to UT Austin, and I knew I wanted to do engineering, mechanical engineering. I was, I've always been into cars, I've always liked tinkering with things, and I've been told like that's what engineers, mechanical engineers do. Mm-hmm. I, was also told it's the, I was also told it's the broadest of the engineering disciplines, so I'm like, yeah, let me get a, a variety of skills. So... I chose mechanical engineering. I thought UT Austin because I thought I had a decent enough GPA, but I got capped. Um, That means they didn't accept me, but they're like, hey, go to another UT school for a year, and then we'll we'll see. Yeah, the cap program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're all in. It's a trap, guys. It's a trap. It is. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I ended up going to the university down there, UT RGV. Uh, for a year, and I had a good experience, but I had a couple of buddies up here that really convinced me to come up here to UT Dallas, so that's how I found myself here. And I've been here five years, too long, <laughs> and I'm ready to go this semester. Oh, yeah. And get oh, ready yeah. to We're make already. some money. Yeah. Awesome, go. awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. Money. <clears throat> hey, Zeus, how'd you get here? Well... It all starts when I was a little boy. <laughs> oh, going back to the beginning. <laughs> uh, nah, I think the majority of uh, of it has always been trying to build drums when I was in high school. Because so I used to be part of a club. Um, and we would build RC drones over there. And so I was always really interested in uh, machines. Uh, but back then, uh, I thought going into the medical field was the uh, was the right choice. Mm-hmm. So I joined high school. So I joined the college for uh, Beeman. And I'm... Uh, Something you learn real fast in Beeman is, uh, <laughs> I know where Keep knows is a little because you used to be Beeman as well, yep. but uh, Beeman is very, very specialized as a major, so uh, very niche. Yeah, very niche. So <laughs> I actually got an offer recently for our medical company as a mechanical engineer, <laughs> so I was just laughing. It was like, <laughs> it's, it's kind of interesting that I got, I still get the opportunity <laughs> for a medical company as a mechanical engineer, but, anyways, yeah. I used to be, I wanted to be Beeman, mainly just because I just wanted to help people, like, in a hospital, people help each other out there, but yeah. then, um, yeah, the more you go into Beeman, the more you realize that it's kind of fucked. The options are kind of, blurred. <laughs> the options are really blurred when it comes to Beeman. You, there's, like, no jobs, oh, uh, you, you're, right. you're, you have to go into a master's program to get a job. Uh, which I'm doing anyways, but like it's for another reason. <laughs> yeah. But uh, for Beeman, you really have to like be on top of your game to get a natural good job. Yeah. And even then, you're you're specialized into like R and D and something that isn't yeah. isn't the most fun. It's easy to get pigeonholed. Yeah, it's oh, yeah, extremely easy since it is a niche. So I I thought mm-hmm. I was like, all right, what's the closest thing to Beeman? <laughs> not, B-men. not to discourage our B-men listeners, you're you're probably better at it than we are. Yeah, yeah, we weren't able to make it, so we're all rejects here. Uh, yeah. We're all rejects here. <laughs> but no, the reason I chose UTD was because I had a friend coming and because scholarship. So. Yeah, yeah, those are always good. Alex, what about you? How'd you get here? Uh, it's nothing special, really. You know, I lived in the area. UTD was a 15 minute drive away. Uh, one of the cheaper options had a bunch of uh, AP credits, so I was like, you know, what? I'm just you know go straight into a four year school, you know. And as for like mechanical engineering, you know, I've always been you know interested in making stuff as a child, you know, whether it was uh, improvised uh, rocket engines or <laughs> uh, tools of mass destruction. But you know, as much as my parents yelled at me, I kept doing it. And I was like, you know what, I'm actually going to learn how to do this professionally and not accidentally blow up my house. <laughs> and so, you know, I started to get into mechanical engineering in high school, joined my robotics club, and did a lot of stuff for that. And yeah, and here I am. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. 
Awesome. Well, that's a journey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, much like Justin said, I'm uh, from the Rio Grande Valley, and uh, we went to a school down there that's called the Science Academy yeah. of South Texas, uh, which is basically an engineering magnet school. So ever since I was in high school, I knew I was going to be an engineer, but uh, at that school, they kind of give you different disciplines, mainly uh, electrical and some mechanical and architectural stuff. Uh, it, it wasn't really until um, one of my engineering classes. I forgot exactly what the class was called, but um, essentially it had a very small portion of mechanical engineering. Well, different fields of mechanical engineering. This is one of the funny things about mechanical engineering. It's so broad. So like we'd go into thermal stuff or we'd go into like uh, like some simple machines and stuff like that. And in high school, I was just like, I really enjoy this. Although I really thought I was going to be an electrical engineer. It was just like, it was like a tiny tip of the scale. That the experiences I had in that specific class that I was just like, yeah, it's definitely mechanical engineering for me because it's broad. I, I can go into practically any industry. Uh, it's funny because like in some colleges you can apply for like a, a general engineering degree and it's not the best idea. The best idea is to go into mechanical engineering because mm -hmm. you're essentially a general engineer. You can go into chemicals, you can go into <clears throat> yeah, biomedical, very broad. Aerospace, you can go yeah. aerospace, you can go into litter or anything. Yeah. Mechanical engineering, in my opinion, is the father of all engineering because... It's the oldest, right? I, th I believe it's the oldest. I, th I think it is. I think yes. it There was no electricity before. <laughs> no computer <laughs> science back then. There's no yeah. aerospace yeah. Came back before in the, the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Technically, the first one was right. like uh, like military military stuff. Oh. It was civil. all what, or maybe civil. Well, maybe it was, it was more civil. Civil oh, engineering. The crazy civil engineering was like well, yeah, yeah, yeah with yeah, aqueducts yeah. and all yeah, that stuff. So, for sure, yeah. uh, but the the first like professional engineering was like war related stuff. Probably. And off of that, like you know, you get computers, you got cars, you got so many different things that uh, just added on to what engineering is. So, um, my big my biggest inspiration through that was actually that class. Uh, that just taught me the really the most random things and just geared me towards variety, which I really do enjoy. And this uh, major definitely gives me that um, opportunity to experience the amount of variety I like. And um, I think the hardest part of mechanical engineering is choosing an industry because it's just yeah. like... Yeah, <laughs> that's like a whole other major decision. Almost. Yeah, it's just like, oh man, okay, I've decided to be a mechanical engineer, but do I go automotive? Do I go aerospace? Do I go into the food industry? Do I go into chemicals? Do I go into what oil? you want to choose? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. It's so, so much. And, you know, I think that that only adds to the major because, I mean, if you had such an easy choice, like, oh, I'm going into electrical, I mean, into electrical grids, it's just like, ah... You're yeah. working for the government, and you don't got much <laughs> options. Yeah. Um, so so that that is uh, one of my favorite things about it. And then the journey up here, well, I was also capped from Austin. Um, and I went to San Antonio kind of believing the cap system would work for me. Then I had a teacher, unfortunately, uh, reveal to us that the chances of getting the cap program is lower than a percentage. Uh, so, wow. I didn't know it was that low. You know, he was just like, guys... In a hundred students, not even one will make it. What? It'll take like thousands of students to actually make it. And it, and to <clears throat> and to actually like get into UT Austin as a CAP student, you first get accepted into the liberal arts school, and then you have to transfer into your major if you beat the freshman into that major. So it was a very very difficult process. If you had lower than a four point GPA, you weren't getting your major and. The School of Cockerel Engineering in Austin is super competitive, so there was like zero chance. Um, so I just started looking around, and I found that UTD was the next best option for mechanical engineering. And I was just like, "Well, Dallas is Dallas is fun, and I've learned a lot more than just college up here. I've learned a lot of like good habits in Dallas." Um, I'm not going to say that my hometown was absolutely horrible, but definitely was of a lower caliber than what's going on up here. Uh, so, yeah, it's been quite a journey. I think, like, the biggest part of college for me was growing up as an adult uh, versus actually learning what was in my class, although it is important. Like, I, I, I have learned a lot from my major, but I feel like it was the, like, if you will, character development that I've gotten up here that's really made an impact on me. Mm -hmm. Ricky? Ricky? So, How'd you get here? 
so basically, uh, I came here for my mom and dad. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I graduated. At, I graduated high school in twenty in two thousand eighteen. And after that, I applied to UT Austin and got in, but I chose UTD because of all the money they, you know, they're giving me and all that. And then I had initially, I had initially enrolled in uh, in the Beeman program, but uh, what what Jesus had, I can't talk. What Jesus had said that how Beeman is so so small and niche. Because of that, I had switched my major to um to mechanical mechanical engineering, and I've loved it ever since. Honestly, uh, honestly, I grew up uh with making like so many toys and like um, um, uh, RC cars and some marine and some some marine some marine. Holy crap! And yeah, because of, so like, <laughs> I kind of always knew that I wanted to become. An engineer, so yeah, I am at UTD doing mechanical engineering now. <laughs> nice. You awesome. got yeah. into UT Austin. I know, yeah. I kind of regret it. We're over here, like, I kind of regret it. I kind of regret it, but then I kind of don't you know? regret it. Yeah. Only because I know that if I did go to Austin, I would be a whole different person in a bad way. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it was a little much. The city of Austin's a yeah, little it, much. Yeah. I've also um, heard that, like, Austin is just way too big. You become one yeah. out of yeah. literally yeah. hundreds of it's students. It's harder to shine bright in yeah. Austin. Oh yeah, yeah. than it is here, and especially since everyone over there is already uppity. <laughs> Sorry yeah. about that, but uh, like it's kind of true. People there, if you're going to Austin, it's because you have money, and yeah. that like that level of confidence just adds to your um, your belief of uh, your brightness. I'll just say. Yeah. 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 So. Cool. Yeah, whether you're going to Austin or UTD, or if, even if you're going to another school, I mean, <clears throat> at the end of the day, none of that stuff really, really matters. All that matters is your perseverance and your eagerness to learn and your and your degree. <laughs> and, well, your degree. <laughs> and your degree, yeah. yeah. As long as you get the piece you of paper, yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's the that's the we all have the eyes on prize. So it's all the same destination. All the same destination. Same but, yeah, it doesn't really matter how you got there. The difference um, is the journey. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I'll go. I'll go over my journey here. Dude, it's, it's been pretty wild. So I started off in high school. I guess one teacher introduced me. So it was a Photoshop teacher. He was also the teacher for the robotics team there. So I was like, oh, hey, I'm kind of interested as well. So I was mainly doing architecture in high school, which got me into Photoshop. I was like, oh, this will this will be mm -hmm. this will lead me down the path in the future for architecture so which is introduced me to engineering and then after that i mean we got together we kind of started talking about things he's like all right so let's talk about your future he introduced me to this early college thing so i went to richland community college which is here a community college here in dallas uh, they had a high school program and from there they said hey let's get you started off in engineering already so i did that for a year and a half i didn't really take it too seriously but i mean i still ended up going to ut dallas from there I didn't apply to many colleges. The only ones I did apply to was University of Houston, UT Which? Tyler, and then I think Texas Tech, and then someplace in Nebraska Lincoln. And then Nebraska Lincoln was offering a good chunk of money, but I was like, ah, it's Nebraska. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why did you Nebraska like Nebraska? I don't know. They were they offering want. a lot of money. Oh, so, okay. Which city? Nebraska Lincoln. Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, Nebraska. That's, that's their main city. Mm -hmm. You never heard of it. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He doesn't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> Is that a city? That's a city, dude. Yeah, they have corn husks there. That's what I've heard. A lot of fuels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah, and then yeah. I just applied to you to that. So I was like, well, I mean, I already live here. Might as well apply. Everyone's mm -hmm. applying here for my college, community college. So might as well see what's up. I didn't even think about UT Austin. I was like, yeah. I mean, honestly, at that point, I didn't even know if I wanted to continue going to college. Mm -hmm. And uh, look at me now. You're here. Yeah, <laughs> you're right here. You're yeah, yeah, man. You made this all nice to me. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, UT, UT Dallas was, uh, I mean, I came here for the tour. Once I saw the new mechanical engineering building, it was oh. literally built the year I, I was supposed to enter. I was like, this is perfect. They're building a building for me. That's, that was my <laughs> mindset. For you. That was yeah. my mindset, right? True. I was like, this is perfect. This is my building. This building for yeah. me. <laughs> I'm meant to You're come just getting here. ready. Yeah, exactly. They knew I was coming here. I came <laughs> they yeah. finished when I transitioned. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they built it like, just for me. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, so, I mean, that was, that was kind of the tipping point. I was like, ooh, okay. I mean, at some point, I almost debated 
going into yeah, I know. into architecture, switching your nice. to architecture, mm-hmm. going to like UT Arlington or something. I remember this. That's where I went. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. where I went. So, I, mean, I thought it was interesting that you brought that up. I was like, oh. Yeah, I actually did it for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's more of an artsy degree. It's more of a your... creative. It is a creative arts yeah, degree. That's what I, I found out. Yeah. That's what, yeah. Honestly, had I had I really taken it seriously, I probably would have been really enjoyed that. Yeah. I mean, that's not saying I didn't enjoy mechanical engineering. But it's a lot harder, I would say. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's it's different. Like, the time commitment is honestly, like, worse. Like, it's way worse in architecture. And if yeah. any of our listeners, like, know someone in architecture school or if you transferred yourself from architecture, you're probably, like, nodding your head right now <laughs> with what I'm saying. But, like, yeah. But, um... I would say the mental rigor. The yeah, mental yeah. Rigor. It's more of just, like, the kind of person that you are if you're more focused on, like, um you know the the creative the creative arts if you're someone that really likes the aesthetics of things making things look nice making people feel good when they're in around public spaces or in residential spaces and if you really get a kick out of that you know that's that's more power to you it's just the way that things turned out for me maybe for you is that i was more interested in the equations and the mathematics behind everything and uh, that was just the, that was the main decision. I was like, well, I'm going to go try, I'm gonna try, try and try math classes at college, college <laughs> and see how I like it. So the unfortunate yeah, side cool. of it also is like the job availability. Mm-hmm. That was the other thing. That was another thing. Yeah. I've heard like, uh, <clears throat> like with the current, uh, like, like mindset of the economy, it's less like, um, architecture i think has actually declined it's very difficult yeah yeah it's, once it's, i would have graduated like if i had stayed with architecture i would have graduated like right into the pandemic like right into covid and, yeah like, i thank my lucky stars every night that they didn't turn out <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah so i think that's all of our stories did you have anything you wanted to add eric or? uh no I mean, somehow i ended up being the president of ace and me Somehow, somehow, you somehow. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like I, I, I should give more credit to everyone around me than to myself because like everyone kind of fuels me into su- success. And I, I feel like that's, that's just like that's a big thing. I feel like that's just been a big thing through ASME in general. Yeah, like, just supporting each other and each other. like building off of each other. Like, yeah. um, I've been in ASME for about three years now, and I, I feel like I, I've learned a lot. But like, it's just learning off of my peers. The people I work with, um, like the the ones that like I kind of like direct, as an as an officer, it's just like I think I've learned sometimes more from our members and sometimes than I've ever no, done in a classroom because no, like, you know, those member our members so are crazy. Man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They they have some great great minds in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow, that's really interesting. That's really cool. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah, and you know, I'm sure you can probably tell, but you know, not everything that Learn become like being an engineering student is more about just memorizing equations and taking notes and studying for exams. It's also about learning to work with people, learning to you know make friends, working working professionally with people. Um, yeah, so there's really and I feel like that's a that's the side of engineering that lots of students uh, try to avoid. They just mm-hmm. go for like the hard math. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. like, they end up being super smart, but it's just like, all right, now talk to a team. It's just like... <laughs> or talk to a non-engineer, like, yeah. explain this problem. And it's yeah. like, it's hard. It's a skill in of itself, like, yeah. explaining yeah. to a non-engineer, like, what you're trying to get across. Especially when you go into the real world, it's... You're not you're not dealing with like, all engineers. You, also, you have to talk to, like, people that are in finance and that have clients. no idea about, yeah, like, absolutely. equipment, the engineering, or the science that goes behind it. All they know is I need a product and I need it to work like this. Yeah, yeah. And, and you do the rest. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's also the age gap that kind of scares people. It's like you're 24 years old, 25, 26, however old you are, graduating out of college, just fresh into the industry. All of a sudden, you have to present to people. You got to sell yourself. Or yeah. Double your age. You know, do they really respect you? Well, I mean. That's kind of that's kind of mind grinding when you think yeah, about it. It's but like, oh it's gonna be the cycle. One day job. you're gonna be that's fifty, judging someone that's twenty five, and it's just just or the being cycle. Being told someone that's, to do something but that's twenty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Just the yeah. cycle, but uh, I mean, it, it's not it's not vicious. It's just progress. It's just the way it goes. I actually did have a, a quick question for everyone because I'm pretty sure as engineers, because I, I feel like engineers have like a certain little knack about them because there's like a funny video they show us our freshman year about the knack but like what are some things that you guys did because i heard like you guys <laughs> mentioned some stuff mm-hmm. like uh like rakeem made a submarine like what are oh. some things that you guys did that kind of define 
I'm an engineer as a young person. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm allowed to say that without being put on the list. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's <my> list. <laughs> yeah, that's a really interesting question. I mean, I used I was a Lego kid. I no, I used to make no, everything out of Legos. Legos so yes. yeah, so that was probably mine. Uh, I made everything. Uh, something I would do, I would always take uh, take apart my my toys. Same. Like if I had like a Nerf gun, I'd like unscrew everything, take all the parts together and see if I can put it back together. That's cool. And then I would uh, go as far and augment the weapons by destroying them because I would like drill a hole or I wouldn't drill holes, but I would like yeah. get a screwdriver and like kind of use my hands to like <laughs> drill yeah. uh, and I'd just end up destroying it. But um, <laughs> but it was it was the process of thinking like I can make something happen. <laughs> way better than this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it work work, yeah. work <laughs> no, I, did, I did the same thing sort of but i think the biggest thing for me god uh <laughs> was fire <laughs> don't <laughs> spoil <laughs> it <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, no. no it was i was really into like rocketry so like i had this really old skateboard and now i would like fill up so like a soda can with like butane or like some other uh, fire stuff okay. and i'd like strap it to the skateboard and i'd try to make it like a what is it like a simplified rocket engine. like rocket powered yeah <laughs> skateboard rocket powered skateboard. Yeah. Like something out of a cartoon <laughs> yeah and i'm still trying to do that but you know with actual a little bit more yeah a little bit learning. more like thought process into it a little bit more safe um, but you'll get there yeah, I'll get there. Uh, first batch of rocket candy didn't turn out well, mm. but next batch. Next batch. <laughs> next batch. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, th- I mean that re- that kind of reminds me because I knew a guy who. Have you ever heard? I'm not sure. Maybe we, I can edit this out. But have you ever heard of the Anarchist Cookbook? Hmm. So, I, yeah. You have. Yes. Yeah. So I knew a guy that. So for those of you who don't know, the Anarchist Cookbook Cookbook is um, a book made by a whole bunch of uh protesters during the vietnam war and it had a whole bunch of stuff about you know how this is how you can like use gasoline this way and that way is kind of crazy mm-hmm. and that's what made me think of that um and i knew a guy who tried to he tried to boil gasoline in his own kitchen and he almost oh. like blew his own house up you see that's, that's something that i would never do because like i'm not that dumb like I'm <laughs> yeah, crazy, yeah. But i'm not like yeah i'm a bl- risk blowing up my house it's like no i'm gonna do like little controlled experiments yeah yeah, yeah. in order to so. like figure out what i can do but it's like gonna be outside you know in a controlled environment with a yeah. fire extinguisher yeah. like duct tape to, to be fair life. he was like 10 but still that was <laughs> pretty not as smart not as kidding not as <laughs> 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 yeah 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 i don't know maybe so wild. yeah so yeah. future engineer right there yeah maybe he is maybe he is future nice. engineer or future pyro <laughs> yeah pyro me yeah he's either at a high paying job or he's in prison <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can go next uh the one thing I did was, uh, honestly, dude, I grew up around construction. So, dude, <laughs> since I was five years old, I was up on top of roofs, already working with my dad, just in the roofing industry and construction in general. So, I mean, I guess the one thing I did get to do is mess around with, I mean, you got your, what's it called, your compressors out of that <clears throat> year. Um, you did a lot of nail guns. Stuff. Yeah, I did, I did a lot of, lot of on-hand work. Um, so res- tons of residential work. It's like fixing up houses. Uh, did, I mean, dude, I could probably build you a house right now if you asked me to. Man, yeah, right. I think I'd lose it. Okay, well, last, I don't know. <laughs> you got I 10 years. I, I, I'll say this, but I could probably build you a shed right now. And yeah, you'd be yeah, pretty yeah. impressed. It'd be pretty uh, good. Yeah, so I think just construction and buildings in general, which is kind of kind of what led me into architecture, I guess, at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Subconsciously, I never thought about it up until today. So. <laughs> thank you, thank you is that a revelation? Yeah, that's yeah. a yeah. question. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it turns out I'm working in the construction industry right now. So, yeah, what a revelation! What a time! <laughs> yeah, what a that's time, my man. thing. That is awesome. Awesome. Uh, I mean, the only thing I did was Legos. Legos. <laughs> Legos. Yeah, Legos. 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 I feel like that's so like we got the normal people, and then we have that's like a fundamental. <laughs> us Legos. Like, that's like, a fundamental. Well, I feel like everyone has played with Legos at one yeah. point. Yeah. yeah, I can't say I did. 
Really? 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 Well, Legos are kind of cool. Cool. <laughs> actual wood. It was actually actual wood, cool. man. Yeah, yeah, you were actually building stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, man, you were probably like sawing. Yeah. 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 You were looking over at the other kids playing with Legos and just like, the amateur hour. I bet you had Lincoln Logs, didn't you? He made his own Lincoln Logs. Yeah, he made his own. Yeah. Very nice. Fun times. How are you, Justin? Honestly, I don't. I was thinking about it while you guys were talking. Um, I don't. I don't really have anything that I did as a kid that was like, oh, this from somebody's outside perspective, this guy's going to be an engineer. Mm -hmm. I know internally, I've always enjoyed like the concept of coordination, like putting things together to to make something. Mm -hmm. um, that's why a lot of my hobbies. Uh, if they're creative with photography, like I have control of how I want an image to look, uh, what what color uh, color scheme I want, or if I did I did video videography for a little bit, like how I want the message to be relayed in this video. I mean, it's never been specific to engineering. The things that I did as a kid, it more so solidified as I went through high school and then came to college. I was like, oh, math is cool. It's a big tool that you can use mm -hmm. to employ in the real world. So it's like, this is perfect for me because mm -hmm. I can just, there's so much I can do with it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there, there was nothing as a kid, but really with, with the car stuff and the motorcycle stuff and engineering just made sense. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's mine. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so, I mean... Like, like we said before, no one's path to an engineering program is exactly the same. You can have all different sorts of uh, interests and things that aspects that you like. And then that can, you know, kind of feed into what you choose to go into. Like once you get into industry, uh, what kind of what kind of industry you want to work in. Um, I also just kind of in the spur of the moment, like what if we had like the listeners like submit questions that we can. Yeah, answer? and that's, totally, that's definitely possible. possibility. Just yeah. Leave it, leave it in the comments. Yeah. Uh, yeah, leave it in the comments. To us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where it would be yeah. is there like an email that they could send questions to? Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. we could post it in the in the comments for this. Yeah. Now you can straight video. up talk to us in our Discord. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, just join our Discord. Uh, we have yeah. a comments a question section for the podcast if you yeah. want us to answer anything. Or yeah. just the general questions, but like also just talk in the clubhouse if you guys feel like talking about certain things or if you found something we said today kind of funny uh, or, <laughs> more or less or, than funny or relatable <laughs> like you, you guys like all we're, we're we're all cringe we're on, we're on discord <laughs> yeah if you guys send us a text we'll, we'll, we'll be there yeah definitely so yeah so there's multiple ways you can reach out to us uh, we kind of just felt this would be like introductory podcast to kind of like get across you know the goals and then kind of introduce ourselves kind of show what organization we represent um and just to kind of tell our stories. Um, is there anything else that anyone wants to contribute? Because I think that, you know, this is a good uh, introductory podcast we've made here yeah, today, sure. gentlemen. Okay. We need to get some more, you know, we need to get a female voice in here. Yeah. It's all, yeah. We got a lot of those. We, we, we actually we, we they're, 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 They were just really busy today. Yeah. yeah they were busy. Okay. Yeah, they, they, they were but, busy. Yeah. Okay. Al yeah. Alice is usually our, like, uh, Alex uh, Victoria, the OG. Yeah, we gotta get Bailey. Bailey. Sorry. <laughs> so we're like, there's one more, right? Catherine. 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 Yeah. Catherine. Catherine. And, Shannon. And, and Shannon. 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 Oh, and Shannon. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. So that's the that's the the whole like uh, acing the officer board. But the OG that's like podcast crew is Eric, Us right here, Justin. <laughs> um, me oh, and oh, Alex. Alex. We had some virtual. We had, <laughs> we, we, we had this was like us four originally, right? Us yeah. four, and then oh, Alice was also there. Alice, Alice. Yeah. yeah, Alice was there. It was five people. I remember I was a guest for one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't even an officer. You're just like, guys, I'm here. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was, that was, that was a year ago. Yeah, yep. All right, so yeah, there's multiple ways you can reach us. Um, thank you for listening. Thanks so much if you made it all the way. Uh, we appreciate that, and we look forward to hearing from you in the future. Uh, so have a great night. A great night, everybody. Yeah. If you have any Bye. suggestions, tell us. Right.